Good morning, everyone. Here I am down in the bottom corner. Uh, it is nice to be able to come out to you again today. It is Friday, August 28th, 2020. And we know at this point that children are coming back to school in Groton Dunstable Regional School District on September 16th. So you have a few weeks now to be thinking about how you are gonna help them get ready for school, whether they're in-person learners, at-home learners, or a little bit of both. So I am coming to you to share this slide deck today. I am going to present this deck to you about that, learning in person and at home 2020 helpful hints. This is certainly an unprecedented year, but whether your children are going to learn completely from home, mostly at school, or a combination of both, there are similar ways that you can help get ready for the school year. And I've had lots of um, email questions about um, doing a vlog of this nature, being able to share some ways that you can help your um, children get ready, whether they're in kindergarten or in 12, a senior in high school. Today, we, you will hear about communication. You will hear about a strategy called to do, doing, done. Setting up your at home space, sticking to a schedule and a routine, defining what a break looks like, using journal and reflection as a strategy, and a bit about being mindful. Each one of these could be a vlog on their own for sure. So this is just a little bit in each one of the areas, which I can certainly expand upon as we move into the school year a little further, but I wanted to give you um, some strategies to get started with. So the first one I chose is communicate. You need to decide how the best ways to communicate as a family during this time. You need to decide how you will talk about feelings. Those are two very important things. Being transparent about how you will communicate with one another avoids a lid flip, which you learned about in one of my previous vlogs. If you haven't watched that vlog, you can certainly do so with the link in the archive of this issue of News Bites. In-school students will wanna talk about the way their classroom looks, the new expectations in their building, their new teachers, and their new classmates. So you will wanna carve out time for that and you will wanna carve out some specific questions around those areas for your in-school students. Your at-home learner learners are gonna to wanna to talk about what is it like to Zoom and what are the expectations? Who is their at-home learning group? Who is in their partner classroom learning in school? And what kinds of different things do you think you will need when you are learning at home? So explicitly have those conversations with your learners, no matter what their age. Remember, with a few exceptions, all students will be learning and completing schoolwork at some point during the week at home. Schools will be dismissed a bit earlier than in the past with at-home work expectations. And all students will be learning from home on Fridays and expected to complete and turn in a work product. So once you've got those ways to communicate set up, you'll also want to include a strategy called to do, doing, done. No matter what your age, you might like to adopt this as well. Um, this is a wonderful transferable skill that helps your child, your learner, practice using their executive functioning skills and their frontal lobe, which we know is, is something they're developing now. So using the strategy has been very successful, both in classrooms that I've taught, in which I've taught, and my own home with my own children. A to-do doing done board looks something like this. It does not have to be fancy. It looks like this one might be a whiteboard that's being used with post-its and um, dry erase marker, but you can use a wall, you can use painter's tape. We'll talk a little more about that. This strategy transcends developmental space. All students, whether they're at home, in school learning, in elementary school, all through high school should try this strategy. You can design your own, you can use painter's tape on a wall, post-its work um, with words, or you can use pictures, start now. <laughs> so you might wanna start by mapping out one of your days on the back of a door or in a wall in your kitchen that says, you know, today are the things that we need to get done. These are the things we have to do. 
as you start to do those items, you move them over to the doing column. So they're in progress. Nice thing about this too, is if this is a task that somebody else can help with and they have a few minutes, they might look in the to doing to do or the doing column and do that task. And then you pick that task up and you move it over into the done. Uh, you know, some ways that young children can use this is you can, you can create pictures, whether it's a little chore they need to do or they're getting to watch TV at a certain time. Um, it becomes a task list for them. As you move up through the grades, this can certainly be what you would use to organize a day. Assignments for to do. As you're doing them, they move over. When they're done, they move over again. Um, I think about this with my own daughter with college planning. She has a to do doing done that doesn't get much movement each day. But over the month, we can see the tasks that she needs to do around applying for colleges and getting ready to um, make selections about where she wants to go next year. Um, and we see those move through the doing phase and the done phase. This is a very good visual for students, for anyone to feel like they have made progress. I look forward to seeing any pictures you have of your to do doing dones. Step three is your at home space. As you're setting up your learning space at home, whether you're an at home learner or you're an in school learner that will be doing some learning at home, involve your children and talk about what they need when they are learning at home. This can't be something that you just set up for them without having a conversation. The key is to engage them in this process. Remember the more ideas that come from them, the more motivated and the more buy-in you will have from your learner. Your setup can be portable. Use time now to have conversations and gather materials. You've got all the way till September 16th. I assume you'd wanna have it set up before then, but you certainly have some time to gather some materials and that will become clear about what you might gather in just a moment. And there are many ways to do this, but the best way I feel as I've spoken with already is to really engage your children in the process. If they build it, they will use it. Um, set the expectations for your children know what the choices are, what choices are available when they're making decisions for their learning. Um, so for example, as you're going to look at this next slide, this is a trifold board. This is a wonderful way to set up an at home workstation. It can be fancy or as simple as your children choose. Clearly this person in this example got really into it. Okay, they hung different post-its on one side because maybe they're a learner that uses post-its. They've decorated the back with some things that, you know, are, are they might like to look at while they're learning. On the other side, there's looks like there's some paper for some lists. It can look like this, or you can get some of those um, plastic sheet protectors. You can hang those up on the tri board and you can slide sheets in and out. So there's lots and lots of ways to do this. A simple search online on a, a personalized homework station or um, that of the like can, can help you to get some ideas, good project to do with your child. Um, again, this folds up at the end of the night or on a Friday. So if you don't want to be looking at it in your kitchen or in your living room or whatever space that you've actually designated for your child to do at home work, um, it can go away, it can go in a room, it can go under a bed. It is taken care of by your child. It can be updated at any time. Um, the other space I'd like to talk about while we're on this topic of at-home workspaces, you should really think about the number of children that you have, how you're spreading them out, what spaces they may want to be using when they're Zooming with their classes. Um, this would be an important thing to figure out before you come back to school so that everyone feels like they have their own learning space and they know that they can ask for help setting up that space before they're needing to use it. So give this a try. Um, please feel free to send me some of the pictures that of the stations that you set up. Um, I would love to be able to share those in a upcoming news bites. Um, we can encourage each other to use this strategy. Step four is a schedule and a routine. I know this sounds pretty basic, but it's very easy to forget to have a schedule and routine, um, especially for at-home learners that are not going to be spending much time in-person learning. 
So no matter what age or where your children are learning, a schedule and a routine, they are essential for success. At-home learners should keep a morning routine that includes waking up with enough time to activate their brains, eat breakfast, say good morning, and set intentions. Um, we don't want at-home learners rolling out of bed and onto the computer or rolling out of bed and into their morning meetings. You really do need to give your brain wake-up time um, as much as you can set a schedule as a family of what time is you are you going to need to get up? Are those times posted somewhere? Um, are you used to using an alarm? What ways do you wake up? Have these conversations before school starts. At school, learners should be planning their morning so they have time to do the same. So, you know, they shouldn't be rolling out of bed and a high schooler, if they're driving into their car, off to school. Uh, they shouldn't be rolling out of bed and running out to the bus. I know these things happen for all of us. We have our mornings for sure, but the more intentional you can be about a schedule and a routine, uh, you know, the better off your student is going to feel about starting their learning. During the school day, in-school learners will have that learning routine while they're in their in school. They will be leaving school with an at-home assignment. You're going to need to think about what that at-home time will look like. And it might involve one of those boards we just talked about. It might involve a snack or a break as they walk in the door. But they are going to be responsible for handing in an assignment um, and showing up for end-of-the-day attendance. So you want to be thinking about um, what that looks, feels, and sounds like. In-school learners will also be at home all day on Fridays, so they are going to need that space carved out. Friday is a learning day. Plenty of work will be going on on Fridays, even if those children are not coming into school like they were Monday through Thursday. Or at the high school, you'll have two days on and three days as remote learning, including Fridays. So you want to be thinking about what defining what your expectations are about that at-home learning time. At-home learners will have guidance from their at-home partner teachers. They will help to set up the schedule, but learners should practice different ways to keep track of the schedule each day. That to-do doing done could be one way. After school, remember that in-school learners will be spending time at the end of each day at home, and for them, after school will not be until they work on an at-home assignment. So this will be a shift for them. Have that plan and routine in place and re-examine that plan about a week in because that's when things usually start to become a little more clear about what the capacity is of the student and how this is going to look, feel, and sound for them on a regular basis. So be flexible and be ready to refresh and recalibrate that plan if you need to. Remember, at-home learners will be learning a full school day. Having reminders about what is allowed during the school day and what time it ends is a conversation to have ahead of time. For example, using TV or technology as a break time will make it really difficult for a student to transition back into work. I will talk a little bit later on in the month about transitioning. Uh, I will vlog a, a separate vlog on transitions and how you help students transition from a preferred activity to a less preferred activity. Um, and this could be helpful during these times when you're, where you're trying to make it through the, the last end of the day. Step five is breaks. Everyone is going to need breaks. You need to define what is a break. A break could be five minutes. Um, it could be a bathroom break. A break could be a snack. A break could be a cognitive break, which we can talk a little bit about what that looks like. Um, a break could also just be a walk around the house because you just want to get, get moving. A break could be 15 minutes, and it could be something where you're actually leaving your home and taking a walk around the block. This will require um, students to be able to time themselves, and younger ones might need some help with that, um, even high school students you need to define what a break looks like. We know we all go on breaks and we look at the watch and we're like, oh my gosh, it's been 25 minutes. This was supposed to be a 10 minute break. So practicing what take, taking breaks looks like is a good way to get ready to go. Um, and there's lots of different ways to talk about breaks with your learner. 
So when, when you're asking your learner um, that is going into school, you can talk about some, they have some prior knowledge with what a break might look like at school and they can talk a little bit about that. Their breaks now may look a little um, less at their desk. And so teachers will help them get used to that. Uh, and you'll want to talk with your in-school learner about how to use breaks when they're offered at school and how to determine how to ask for a break if if they need one at a non-break time, because that's a, absolutely a fine thing to, to do. Um, for at-home learners, they may need some more help with it. Um, there could be more interesting things to get involved with at home. Break boxes of different kinds can be helpful. I'm going to show you what those look like. And you can work on making break boxes or break lists that involve your children in the process right now. That is a good thing to work on right now. What might you put in your break box? Um, then your learner will know what to do when a break is in the schedule and they can be independent about taking that break, especially if you're working from home. In school students, uh, talk with your child's teacher in school if you feel like a break box might be helpful for your child and they can talk about what might be most acceptable to have in a break box um, so that things in there don't become a distraction to the student or to the rest of the class. Here are some examples of break boxes. They do not have to be fancy and the things inside of a give me a break box, calm down, clearing your head, those things should be um, things chosen by the student, um, of course, with your help. Again, this can be used K to 12. High schoolers need breaks too. What might they put in a virtue of, you know, a, an invisible break box? They may not want this particular looking break box, but you certainly could, you know, define what a break might look like. And it might include a yoga mat. It might include headphones and music. It might include um, you know, a walk around the block, what those breaks look like, but I would defining them is, is really important. Um, in addition to that, you could talk about brain breaks that actually really do continue to involve a cognitive activity. So you're not necessarily shutting your brain down. You're just switching the channel. Um, you know, I see Cupid shuffle on the top of this one, which would mean to, to break into dance for sure. And there can be lots of different cards inside a brain break box and it could become like a, almost like a, you know, a, a raffle. You don't even know what you're going to get. You're going to just pick out of your break box and that's the break you're going to have in the moment. So give these a try and let me know how they work. Step six, and we're almost to the end. We have seven steps altogether. Uh, reflection and journals. Reflection is an important part of the process for all families, no matter the age of our learners. Check in with your learners in ways that make sense for your family. And there are many ways that you can reflect on both how learning is going and how learners are feeling. Here's some of those ways. You can start a gratitude journal. You could do that as a family. Journals don't have to be just words. You can have a doodle journal. You know your learner the best and maybe they want to doodle about their day or doodle about a week. Um, there are some really nice graphics out there that can hang on your fridge um, with dry erase markers that you can talk about how you're feeling today. Uh, students often love the emojis and, you know, you can check in with one another or you can, um, you know, just be, be mindful that there's going to be days that you're going to feel happy, sad, angry, worried, surprised, shy, excited, silly, embarrassed. This is just one example. There are lots out there you can grab onto. And then something nice to do is to have a what did you learn space in your in your home. And that might be with post-its or that might be on a trifold where you start to pop those things. What did you learn things onto the board? And when people are taking a break, they might even go read the what did you learn board. And you start to have conversations about really being engaged in learning. And, you know, you might also see that your child's not putting much up there. And you might say, you know, I'm noticing you're not putting anything on your what did you learn board? Are you engaged in school? Do you want to have a chat about it instead? Engaging in those conversations in a fun way will, will help you to reflect on how you're feeling, how it's going, and get used to asking those questions to one another. How are you doing? How is it going? What did you learn? Finally, we have mindfulness. And I saved it for last, but it's really one of the most important things you can start doing right now with your um, family um, to start getting ready to make that shift in your brains to getting back to work and getting back to school in a more um, specific schedule. Mindful versus mindful. Be mindful even if your mind is full. One of my favorite things to remind myself, all of our minds are very full as we think about heading back to school. 
It is important to find ways to be mindful specifically about getting ready to learn. Here um, is one way to start. Have a mindful wake up. Start with a purpose. Our prefrontal cortex is very important. It's the one we talked about in flipping your lid. You can watch that if you haven't had a chance to watch that. That's also in the archive. Engaging this part of our brain as adults is powerful. Practicing using this part of the brain as learners and children is essential. Remember, their prefrontal cortex is not all the way there yet. So engaging the prefrontal cortex when you first wake up can really help you get into that habit of mind to set an intention and revisit that intention throughout the day. So teach yourself and teach your family this strategy. In the morning, set your feet on the floor with purpose. Take a few deep breaths. Set your intention. You might ask yourself, how how will I make the best impact today? Your child might ask, how can I be my best self as a learner and a friend? Take moments throughout the day to check in with your intention. Teach your family how to do that too. Make it a habit of asking each other, how did you do today? It can be part of your reflection process. It could be on your um, you could change your what did you learn board into what was your intention board. There's lots of ways to um, remind each other to be mindful, even when our minds are full. You can do it. I know you get a lot of information today. And as I said, certainly each one of these topics could be a vlog of their own and may very well be in the next coming weeks. Um, but I wanted to make sure that you had some information in these next um, you know, where uh, August 31st is Monday. So we've got, you've got about that 16, seven, you have just shy of three weeks to get yourself into some of these routines. And I hope that you will. And I hope that you will share them with me um, as you move through some of the choices here today. I thank you for watching. And again, this vlog was brought to you by me, Kristen D. Francisco, and it's hosted by the Dr. Ways In YouTube channel. Um, your comments are welcome there. You click on the link, you'll you'll see you'll have seen that you can put some comments in. So I'm always happy to get those and read those. Thank you for watching and good luck as you start to prepare your at-home learner, your in-school learner, or your little bit of both over these next few weeks.